This webinar shows how to use XVL and Lattice tools to make design updates easy. Other webinars in this series include how to use XVL to perform assembly validation and how to use XVL to make work instructions. But what they all have in common is an ability to handle design updates. Whenever the design changes, you don't want to have to redo all of your work. Lattice tools make it easy for you to automatically carry your work forward whenever the design changes. Here is an overview of the design update workflow using XVL. The first step is to convert your CAD data to XVL. Once it's in the lightweight XVL format, you can use your 3D data to do design reviews, assembly validation, author work instructions, write technical documentation, create parts catalogs, and more. Once you've done your work, save it out in the enhanced XVL file. Once you have this file, you can use it to publish documentation and even feed information back to the design team. When there's a design change, the first step is to convert the new version of the model to XVL. But here's the good news. You don't have to redo all of the work you did previously on the new version. You can use Lattice's auto update feature to automatically carry the work forward from version one to version two of the model. Here's how it works. First, the system matches parts between version one and version two and displays the matches for you to review. You can then review and update the parts matches as required. And after confirmation, the system will apply all the work in the version one of the model to version two. You can then save the XVL file as an enhanced version 2 model and use it to update any related documentation. Here's an example of design update in XVL Studio. This is version 1 of the model. It's been directly converted from CAD, so there's an EBOM or assembly tree, but no manufacturer tree, no MBOM, no process list, or anything else. Here's the same model after we've worked on it. We've added a manufacturer tree and process list and additional information here, tools, humans, comments, etc. So let's go ahead now and save this file. Here's version two of the model. It was converted directly from CAD. So as you can see, there's an EBOM, but no MBOM process list, or any of the other work that we did on version 1. We can use the auto detection and update feature to automatically carry that work forward into this new version of the model. The first thing that we'll do is specify the XVL file that contains our work from version 1. Next, we can set up the matching conditions. We can match parts based on assembly tree or manufacturer tree. There's not a manufacturer tree here, so we'll use assembly tree. And we can match on several conditions, such as part name. We could also add additional properties to match. And speaking of properties, when looking for differences between version one and version two, we can detect changes in all the properties or only specific ones that we're interested in. Once we set up the matching conditions the way we want, let's go ahead and update the model. And here are the results. Studio has imported all the work that we did in version one and shows the part matches in the edit panel. Let's take a look at these. Studio shows the parts before the design change on the left and the corresponding parts after the design change on the right. You can list all of the parts, only those that are not the same, only those parts where the part itself is the same but somehow has changed, and only added or deleted parts. When checking the part matches, it's often most convenient to start with the added and deleted parts. So let's take a look at those. You can see here that part 2001 was deleted from version one and replaced, or at least part 2002 was added. So let's see if it's a replacement. We'll start by selecting the parts. And you can see that there's a bit of an overlap here. Now there's different ways to display the 
parts in question. Before the design change, we're displaying it. We're not highlighting it, but we could turn it on to do that. Fitting it, and we can make it semi-transparent or not. Same for after the design change. Also, if you want to see the context of where this part is in the model, you can turn on other parts. Here, let's make them transparent. And you can see that this part here is basically um, right in this part of the model here. But let's go ahead and turn those off. And the more important thing is it looks like this was a replacement of the part. So what we can do is we can instruct Studio to match these two parts even though their names are different. Uh, this is important for us because it allows us to take all the work that was done on the previous version of the part and apply it to the new version in the new version of the model. So if we go ahead and do this and match, now Studio has automatically determined that those two are a match. And here are all the changed parts. As you can see, some parts change property, some layout, some geometry. Actually, now that we've matched this flange, we can show another way to look at a ge geometry comparison, and that is by using the Visualize Shape Comparison tool. And what this does is it takes the two parts and compares surface by surface. So for example, surfaces that match up are yellow, uh, surfaces that are on the initial version of the part are red, and you can see that on the edge here, and surfaces that are on the new version or updated version of the part are shown in green. And so here's a further indication of how the model has changed or this particular part has changed between the two versions. You can also check changed values for layouts by looking at different parts. Here we see two washers. Um, it's not clear exactly where they are, so let's go ahead and turn on some context. Okay, so we can now zoom out and see that those washers are on associated with nuts and bolts with that particular flange that's been updated. So it looks like the bolt hole has moved and both the bolts, washers, and nuts have all gone with it. So that all looks really good. So in terms of what we, our evaluation now, I, I would say that we've confirmed the part matches. And so let's go ahead and finish the update. This allows you to, uh, the system to go ahead and uh, bring all of the data in from the previous version and match it to the new parts as determined by the matches that we found here. And here's the result of the update. It's version two of the model with all of the work that we did on version one. Now at this point, you might wanna find out what exactly changed during the design update. That's easy to figure out. Studio has a find function which allows you to find all the parts that have changed during the design update. That includes the flange we were just looking at, the full model itself, whose property has changed, and the washers and nuts and bolts that we were looking at before. In fact, if you wanna just look at the properties of each of these parts, you can look under the design update tab and it will tell you what properties have changed, in this case, geometry, position, etc. Now, before we go, there's one more feature I'd like to show you. This requires a new version of the model, and in this version, one of the higher level assemblies has been updated. When that happens, the auto detect and update is gonna show a lot of updates of parts where the only thing that's changed is their parent. What that means is that the parent assembly was updated, but the parts themselves may or may not have changed. Now, if you don't care about the part level, if you're only working at the assembly level, you can ignore all this by using the match assemblies only feature. Once you do that, Studio will automatically match the two versions of the assemblies and ignore all the part differences down below. That makes it much easier to work with and much easier to update the information from the previous version to the current version of the model.